Right, so we're playing the Eminem's game. Oops. Uh oh. Fucking. Up. Jesus Christ! Oh, that music is a cluster fuck. Like it's like someone got their finest dollar store Casio. It reminds me of Sheep Dong the Wolf. Fucking control. Stop working. <laughs> I think he's in. Let's use sticks. Shit. Oh, there we go. Right. Yeah. Now, before we start filming, on the intro screen where it's loading well, up. my yellow fellow, it's time these M&Ms had a little R&R. R&R? &R. R &R? Is that a new candy? <laughs> Are we being so, on the loading now? screen. We um, the, 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 the publisher was Simon & Schuster, which Come I thought was weird. Because uh, they're a book publishing company. I didn't know they even published any video games. Last thing Are you sure you're, you're not confused with Siegel & Schuster? No, Simon & Schuster. Okay. Factory. Just checking. Hello? It's what? They what? And what? You're turning. Red. In in my in my head, like all of the game, all, like in my head, all of our playthroughs take place in the same universe. Yep. So like, in in my mind, like the M and M's that are taken over the far tree, are just the same ones that Wasker hides behind the fruit. Yeah, well, I, I thought this took place in the universe where Fry asked uh, the professor, "What if I were a piece of chocolate?" <laughs> and he asked his machine, "What if that thing?" All you need is that would be a good episode of Futurama. <laughs> you know the weird thing is that Billy West is There's the voice of the professor as well. I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah, Billy West is like. Oh, he just most of the voices. He has very bizarre levels of voice range. There goes my partner. There goes my career. Wait, so he's hired? Or does he just turn up to work every day? Is it like... Uh, oh, yeah, he's right. He works as the Red m and No, and is it like in uh, 8 out of 10 gets uh countdown where Don Wilkinson, he's been fired weeks ago, but he just keeps turning up? Yeah. Oh, that's, I forgot the fucking loading bars, mini m &Ms. Yeah. Didn't you describe at one point as basically a Crash Bandicoot ripoff? Yeah, I think I rented this from a blockbuster. Jesus Christ, I'm old. <laughs> I rented this from a blockbuster back in oh. back during my teenage years, and um, basically they would give you two free tubes of M&M's minis when you rented this. <laughs> oh dear, is this like Crash where you have to hit every box? No, 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 there's no bonus for the ball, you just get to the end of the stage. Just fucking drive the car, so... I know, I'm playing on a button seeing if uh, anybody makes me get faster. No, you are stuck at one speed. No. It's an old game, Sam. It's old. Yeah, when this game came out? Was it like 2001? Or? Fucking, I think so, 2001, 2002. The yeah, only interesting thing is published by Simon Schuster. I don't know who made the game, I didn't see that, but... Oh good, there's a theater on that's showing m and this. Or maybe it's just what Whoa! <laughs> in all fairness, that was your fault for driving in the wrong lane. W what do you mean? He was driving on the wrong side of the road. Oh yeah, sorry, I keep forgetting this game takes place in the colonies. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I'm driving on the correct side of the road. Then this madman. <laughs> driving on the wrong side of the road. Fucking breathing death there. The fucking hell. <laughs> oh, that vintage music. Oh, that's, wait, did I accidentally avoid a checkpoint? No, no, you hit it, you hit it, it did the trumpet noise. <laughs> this one street's really fucking long. So it's either 6th Street or Elm Street. <laughs> no, no, it's definitely 6th Street. In a minute, you what the fuck was that U-turn? Yeah, yeah, one hell of a U-turn. Oh, what? You s <laughs> so, are we driving in the colonies or not? We must be because of all the drunk drivers. Yeah. Whoa. No one sticks in their lanes. G uh, engineer, put the fucking clip from Ghostbusters in. Excellent. Oh, dear. What? Well, one like crash into <laughs> you hit the curb. I crashed into the pavement. You're not allowed to mount the curb, son. You can swerve all over the road as much as you want with no regard for lanes. But the second you hit the curb, the cops are raining down on your ass. You know, my uh, driving reminds me of at the minute. 
Go on. There's a clip on YouTube, that's how I found it. Uh, one of the series of Top Gear. Fucking no! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, where the challenge was, they were in Ukraine. Uh, capital Ukraine. And the challenge was, they're driving the fishing cars, by the way. Oh, they had to run the car down? Yeah. Uh, you have enough fuel in your cars. It was a certain amount of litres. To car. reach Chernobyl. Uh, to reach a small town on the border of Belarus. Your plan is to, <laughs> to, run, <laughs> to run out of fuel before you get there. You want to, because the town in question... Well, they said Chernobyl, but that's actually wrong. The town's pretty young. And then, yeah, Richard Hammond's just like... It's swerving like this. Right, yeah. To try and use as much fuel as possible. <laughs> Sick now, if I'm honest. Whoa. Is that a police car? And then the police stopped him to ask him, what the fuck are you doing? And while they stopped him, he kept his foot on the accelerator to burn more petrol. Yeah, he's on neutral, so his car was going. He must have thought he was drunk, mad, or both. Okay, we've been pulled by the police. They were wondering why I was zigzagging. They're talking to the camera car in front. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here at max RPM to try and use some fuel while I'm stationary. But he conked out first, so technically he won the challenge. I, I don't like it. Well, well, I just remember Jeremy Clarkson ended that up. Like he he ended up having the most fuel, and he made it so far in such a novel that he was basically dead at that point. <laughs> And what I think it was Hammond, before this, was taping the windows of his car, the seams of his car up. And uh, Clarkson was asking him, what are you doing? We see, this way, no radiation going into the car. Yeah, but what you've done is you've made your car more streamlined. And so he started, we have a knife, getting rid of all the tape. <laughs> what did, I, honestly, I cannot remember, what did May do? Because remember, um, he was sucking... He, uh, heated seats on... Uh, heating on full blast, windows open. Oh yeah, and he had the doors open. The heat fox with your engine. No, it just burned more fuel. Yeah, that and he had both windows open. Oh dear. No, I'm... yeah, the door, like the driver's door, he was keeping it open for the drag. I missed talking. Yeah. And we really need to watch the Grand Tour at some point. Yeah. I've heard the adverts and they're fucking hilarious because it just consists of Clarkson and Hammond swearing at each other. Do they punch another producer? <laughs> oh dear. Can you imagine, like, punching your producer when Richard Hammond's in the room? It's never crossed my mind. I'm just saying, like, he had, like, why would you punch your producer when Richard Hammond's face is there as an option? Wait, how, what was that car? L look at that. A Pinto. Definitely a Pinto. It was flatter than the motorbike. Oh dear. There must be a low rider. Now, remember, they're driving back. Shit. They're driving back to the factory, right? Yeah. That car only seems to seat one person. And. Oh, the Eminem's car. Yeah. And this road. Was it this bad when they're driving to the airport? Or was it just. Now it's rush hour and everyone can't drive? It's rush. It's, it, well, technically, it's happy hour given the amount of drunk drivers. Yeah. Oh uh, dear, I can't wait for one of the cars to swerve to avoid a squirrel. And then her husband's just gonna have to pay out several thousand dollars in damages. Yeah, we swerve to avoid a squirrel, we hit the pavement and immediately the car blows up. <laughs> that was such a good fucking episode. Hi honey, how you doing? Oh my god! I'm glad you're dead, you know? I'm glad my wife is dead. I'm glad you're dead. I'm lolling right now. I'm happy! <laughs> Lol, you die. Oh, damn it, Tweely, I can shoot, bitch! Horse! You bitch, horse! Ah! Is there a boss in here which is basically Ripper Root, but flying? I think I remember that. This game have bosses? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're bosses. Oh dear. Yeah, so the first or second boss, which reminds me of Ripper Root. There's a fucking problem with the cable again, but I'm not sure. I'll have to check in a minute. Wait, is that a cow? What the fuck? 
That's like three times taller than a motorbike. What was that story you were telling me about the giant cow that got loose? Yeah, in America, a uh, cattle farm, a cow grew so, grew so big, it couldn't fit in like the uh, feeding equipment anymore, and so they just decided to let it go because it couldn't. They couldn't fit in like machine gun. And then, uh, like a week later, there's a story in Canada of Dozer, a uh, massive steer, who was even taller than this one. <laughs> and this guy. Oh dear. Yeah. What? Jesus Christ, how bad are these drivers? Like, he does a fucking U-turn, then another guy comes and don't go on the left! There's no work. Go on the fucking right after you get off the ramp. Yeah, look at that cow. It's twi at least twice as tall as the motorbikes. Also, horrendously pixelated is in comparison to everything else. I don't think those bikers have faces. Oh dear. Get on the fucking right! Did the cow just- That cow just murdered your man. Yes. I know what's for dinner tonight. Ooh. Like- What the- This is a very weird way to start your platforming game. With, like, a fucking driving section. Yeah, because I don't think uh, the Crash games had a driving level until the third one. Well, no, because you had the pig levels in the first game. Oh, yeah. And the polar in the second game. Um, but but they were auto -scrollers. Oh, no, they've got they've got Vikings. This is an auto-scroller. What's your point? Good point. I'm just saying, like, it's a platforming game, so it's we like, you think they'd start with a platforming level first and then do a driving section? Need to swerve right. Ooh, fuck it. Fuck it. This man is determined to die. Are they, wait, are they waiting to rob me or something? Do they think I just carry a load of M&Ms in the car and they want my secret stash? You don't have to carry M&Ms in the car. You are a fucking M&M. They're just going to cannibalize him! Oh dear. I just, the m and they, they exist in a universe where, like, money is fucking worthless and m ms are currency. Like, you've heard of the gold standard? Get ready for the m m standard. Why would you not have a key for your own front door? Yeah, and how come the entrance to the factory is motorway? I thought I'd have to go round the thing. Here goes nothing. Wait, little friend. Maybe it's time to ask who's the best candy for the job. Maybe this calls for the ringer. The what the gun, fuck's going on in the background? Guy. Yeah. It looks now, like it took right. 12 minutes in MS Paint. That's, that's a, are we in lazy town? happened every single day. Oh, dear. No. Just no. We're dead. I'm going to have this entire cake and ease it by myself. Okay. Now let's get some platforming done in this platforming game. Yeah. Wait. Oh no. The minis have messed with the milk chocolate. We're in yeah, why are the Eminem's minis like fucking gremlins in this? It looks like it's been teleported into the basement in JoJo Part 3. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the room where he has to... You know, play video games where he dies, or gets turned into a doll, or... Oh, dear. If the yellow... Like, that's a fight I want to see. The yellow M&M versus Vanilla Ice versus Shaggy. Yeah. Well, it's not really a battle of Shaggy's involved, <laughs> yeah. then, is it? <laughs> yeah, but you underestimate the, M the yellow M&M's power, because the M&M's got, like, raw animal magnetism. Like, have you not seen that advert where he's, like, fucking another guy's wife? <laughs> like, oh. that advert, for those of you who don't know, there's an advert where, like, the red M&M walks in, and, like, the yellow M&M's in bed with some guy's what? No, 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 no that's right! No, you go wrong. The other way around, it's the red M&M, yeah. And he's cheating with somebody's wife. Yeah, the red m with someone's wife, and he's, like, giving it a fuck, guys, and, like, the yellow M&M's in the cupboard watching. Yeah. You were gonna eat him without me, weren't you? Now the biting makes sense. <laughs> Come here, fool. You can touch the yellow ones, you can't touch the chocolate ones. Why? 
M&Ms are killed by cannibalism? I don't fucking know. Yeah. Go! Hard Hut's invincible. Oh. To go over the river of cum. So that's a secret ingredient. <laughs> yes, Sam, we're gonna pump these M&Ms full of special sauce. Oh, so you have seen Howard and Kim are good to watch, aren't you? <laughs> I've lit all I've seen is the scene where Neil Patrick Harris steals their car. I oh, know there's a bit where they try and go to a white castle that's been uh, taken over by another restaurant chain. So, uh, uh, it's, uh, Sam, no, it's, Sam, let me hang yeah. on. In all fairness, I'd expect them to go to White Castle in a film called Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. That's like in the first like ten minutes, um, where it's another restaurant that's taken over, and the guy's saying, "You don't want our burgers. We put a little something in a secret sauce." <laughs> Fucking hell. I won't spoil it in case you want to. Anyone wants to watch the film later. It's good. And in the credits, Neil Patrick Harris is credited as himself. I always love him. So, so my head can is just that he acts like that in real life. He does act like that in real life. And so, I'm, not, tre so I'm treating that film as a documentary. Have you not seen like his live performances? No. Oh dear! Don't touch the nitro crate. Sorry, the danger crates. Yeah, to prevent a lawsuit. Wait. Do I touch and still live? You got hard hat on. Oh. Hard, you're invincible while the hard hat's on, so just go nuts and run through the obstacles. Nice to know that I can survive a bomb explosion just by wearing a hard hat. <laughs> you can't survive that thing. So the minis have gone out and reprogrammed all the all, what, all defense of... droids to attack the workers? <laughs> all of the military-grade M&M's robots jump. Buddy, they look... Kind of like Metal Gears? Uh, what kind of factory is this? <laughs> Emmon. <laughs> Fucking, I need, I need that in my life now. I need a clip of David Hater just like in the snake voice going, M&M's? <laughs> Could everybody please stop getting killed? Oh, dear. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Isn't that pretty much a Metal Gear? Yep. Which one? Rex. Like, cut down yeah, the fair enough. You Remember, think... jump over the obstacle. Yeah, you think that the M&M factory is just a cover for what they're actually building? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna build a giant M&M's themed version of Rex, and then go and challenge Wendy's. Well, maybe the M&M's is just how they're getting the funding. Willy Wonka wishes he had a factory this elaborate. Oh, yeah, shit, I forgot that they what? ripped that off as well from Crash. Oh, God. You know, you have to collect, like, yeah. the three embryo heads. Yeah, this, you have to collect three pieces of the M&M's packet. But, like, Oops. I'll be fucked <sighs> if I'm going to do that, because, like, I can never remember which boxes they're hidden in. You have to be so fucking accurate with that jump. <laughs> I kind of like, like, they're missing out on a trick by not including something in place of the crystals. Go, go, you. Yeah, it's just the camera angles, I want to make sure. Yeah, the last time I played this game was like 15 years ago, so. Oops. Oh. Oops. Uh oh. Th yeah, that will haunt my dreams now. Again. <laughs> oh, we're, do we're doing all of this, by the way, son. <laughs> we're going all the way. Oh dear. Like, if, if you want to pick, put something in the M&M's game, like, in place of the crystals, what would you put in? Um... Because I know this is more supposed to be Crash 1, where they didn't have crystals, but, like... What? Didn't they have crystals in No, they only introduced crystals in Crash 2. Oh, yeah. Crash 1 was just getting to the castle. Um... Like, what, what would you stick in, like, candy-related? What else does Mars own? What own at the time the game was made, I mean. Oh, are they owned by Mars? Yeah. I'll just stick a Mars bar in them. Didn't you know that? Nope. I thought M&M's were their own thing. They either were and Mars bought them, or they were created by Mars. Did have to go down there? Or? Yeah, yeah. Follow the, follow the arrows. Oh dear. Oh god, this game will haunt everyone forever. Yep. 
mean, those eyes. Are like oh, something. Jesus Christ. It's those like something eyes. like Banjo-Kazooie. Like, everything has eyes. Fuck that. I'm having Vietnam flashbacks to Mr. Computer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Maybe Mr. Computer's running the factory. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that would explain everything. Sam, that statement caused me physical pain. <laughs> that statement actually caused me physical pain. Why do you think everything went so bad so quick? Fucking... I'm showing you that episode of a Tall of Fall when yeah. we're done recording. <laughs> you, need, you need to see the Tower of Mr. Computer. Also, what the fuck are those things? Um, they look like rejected Commodore controllers. What, the flipping ones? Yeah, the flipping ones. They remind me of the machine, uh, the robots from, uh, what's that sci-fi one by Christopher Nolan? Um, uh, Interstellar. Interstellar 555? Uh, no, the other one. <laughs> I, ge oh, I genuinely, um, I almost said After Earth then because I forgot who directed it. What? Oh, no, we don't talk about After Earth. That was Shyamalan. Mm. Yeah, you, yeah. Engine it. Pull up a picture of the robot from... Yeah, just bump side by side like that. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Oh, Christ. That's creepy. Do you think Chris Renault was inspired by this game? Or? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I need inspiration for my sci-fi game. What's an obscure source? I know. A game made in the early 2000s. No one will think I ripped off that. I wonder, I wonder what else Christopher Nolan's made the M&M's games inspired. Inception. It all makes sense now, Sam. What the hell is that? What the hell's what? It looks like a Pokemon. It's the same things as usual. I'm pretty sure part of this is literally just the layout to the Corsax power map. Do you think they would have ripped off that much? I really think they would have ripped it off that much. There's a fucking bonus level over there. Oh. Uh, this game has bonus levels? Apparently. So what's the goal of this? We're gonna get from one end of the factory to the other. I mean, is it... <laughs> the sh the c we're gonna get the secret formula, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, there's a critical video I have to show you! Uh, I just remember, I saw a meme where it's like, person about to sleep saying, Are you trying to sleep? <laughs> yes, brain, what is it? Steven Hillenburg is the only one who knows the secret formula. And then it's like, wide-eyed awake. And he took it to his fucking grave. Yep. 